Hello, Algebra friends. Welcome to our next section in Chapter P. This is section P.4 or P.4. This is probably the most important section for you to review because it's all about factoring. And factoring is probably one of the biggest skills that you need in all of math, especially during your high school math career. Even in AP Calculus right now, we are using factoring to solve calculus type problems. So you're going to always, always need factoring. It is such an important, important skill. So we made this flip book in class. And what you're going to do is just basically flip up each flap. You're going to have a place for notes if we have to write down formulas or write down words of what's happening. And then tons of problems. There's about 70 problems in this flip book. We'll do a bunch of them and we'll leave a bunch for you to practice on your own. But this is a great, great tool, a flip book, to help you with factoring. Okay, friends, let's do it. Let's begin. Ready? The first flap, when you open it up, is all about the GCF, or what we call the greatest common factor. It's always important, friends, that when you start factoring, the first step is you look, look, always look for a greatest common factor. Look for a GCF that you can factor out of every piece. So always, always look for a GCF that you can factor out first. And then we'll do the many other techniques that come up later. But you have to always, 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 I can't say it enough, look for a GCF first. Okay, let's try it. Number one. Number one, let's just factor this one completely. Again, first step, look for a GCF. Is there something that goes into both terms here, the 51x squared and the 17x that I can factor out or pull out? Okay, let's look at numbers first. Between 17 and 51, oh, those are terrible numbers, friends. But I'll tell you right now that 17 does go into both of them. So I know I can pull out a 17. And one term has an x squared and the other one has an x. So I think I can only take one x out total from both of them. I can't take out two because the second term only has one x. All right, when we factor it out, it goes outside and we build a new parentheses. And generally, what we're doing with factoring, friends, is we're taking things that are being added, subtracted, added, subtracted, and we're changing into things that are being multiplied. That's basically what the gist of factoring is, which is really helpful later when we need to solve. When we need to solve equations, we're going to solve by factoring. Okay, 17x, leftovers. Now, when you factor out, you're thinking about dividing. That's what factoring really is. So when I factor out a 17x, I'm imagining, let's divide that first term by 17x, and what's left? Well, 51 divided by 17 is 3, and x squared divided by x, I can subtract my powers, and I get x to the 1 power. And then when you divide the second term by 17x, 17x by 17x is 1. And there's your first answer. You can always check if you're right. It's so easy. All you got to do is just redistribute in, re-multiply in. So in a way, it's kind of hard to get factoring wrong because you can always check your work. All right, how about we try number two together? All right, it says factor. So we're going to be changing this from addition into some version of multiplication like we did on number one. But we always look for a GCF first. Here we go. Look at the numbers. How about 9 and 18? What do you think? A 9? Okay. I heard that. Now we've got 7 y's here, and we've got 4 over here. So really, I can't take out 7 because the second term doesn't have that many. We can only take 4 of them, really. So I guess the shortcut is look at the term and look at the smaller exponent, and that works. Okay. Now after you do that, leftovers on the inside. When you factor out a 9, y to the fourth. From the first term, the nines divide out, so you're left with just one something. And the y to the seventh divide by y to the fourth. If you subtract, you get three y's left, y to the third. Plus, let's divide the 18 by the 9, and we get 2. y to the fourth divide by y to the fourth is just y to the zero, or just 1. So number 2 is done. Good job. And again, if you want to check, you can multiply back in. You know what? Just for the heck of it, let's just show why that always works. Ready? If I distribute in, let's do 9y to the 4th times y to the 3rd. That's 9y, 4, and 3. You add, right? You get 7 plus 9y to the 4th times 2. You just multiply the 9 and 2. You get 18. 
and keep your y to the fourth. Well, looky here, my friends. We got the same thing we started with. Celebrate. All right. So you can always double check, friends, by multiplying out. Let's do one that has a lot of variables in there. What looks good? Ooh, I'm going to do number six, maybe because of all those negatives. All right. And it says factor, so we should always look for a GCF first. Okay. Now, if I'm looking at numbers, do you notice how I have a negative in the front? It's always a good habit to factor the negative out. Factor him out because it's going to make solving down the road a little bit easier. Just going to have to trust me on that one. Minus. Okay. 16 and 24. How about a GCF between 16 and 24? If you think about it, there's lots of 2 and 4. But I think the best one, the biggest one, the greatest one, I think is 8. Okay. Now, let's just look at one letter at a time. Ready? How about the M's? M5 and M2. So we need to take out M2. N3. N4, the smaller one is the 3. All right, leftovers. Now you're dividing a negative 16 by negative 8, so that's a positive 2. M5 divided by M2 gives you 3 left. And N3 divided by N3 is just 0 or 1, basically N to the 0 or 1. So you basically are just left with 2M to the 3. Okay, now, when I divide the next piece, it was a negative, but do you notice how I took a negative out? So now it changes this sign to a positive. Okay, now when I take an 8 out of 24, that's 3 left over. m squared divided by m squared is just m0, or 1, so I can just move on to the n term. And n4 divided by n3 is just n to the 1. When you're done, it's good to double check, not just by distributing in, but look what's inside the parentheses. Is there anything more in common that I can factor out? Any more GCFs? And if no, then you're probably good to go. If there is, then we have to probably pull something else out that we get to factor. But no, we did a pretty good job. On all three problems, if you look at the parentheses, there's no more greatest common factors. All right, so first step, always, 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 huge, look for a G. CF. All right. I'm going to leave some problems there for you to practice. But if you flip to the next one, the next one is a really important one called a difference of squares. And here's your formula for difference of squares. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a difference, meaning you see subtraction between two terms, of two squared terms. That's a difference of squares. Some people call it a difference of two squares. Same thing. Do you remember in the last section or so when we learned about how to multiply out things, we learned that if you take a plus b and you multiply by a minus b, sort of its conjugate, we learned that, okay, when you FOIL everything out, you get four terms, but the inners always cancel, and you're just left with a squared minus b squared, right? So that was kind of a neat shortcut. Well, what we're doing here, folks, is we're starting to the right side, and we're going to the left side. So here's our formula, folks. Ready? a squared minus b squared, a difference of squares, always factors into this. Two parentheses multiplied. And the first term is basically the square root of the first term, a and a, and the square root of the second term, b and b. And then you just alternate signs like a conjugate, plus here, minus here, or you can do minus here and plus here, it's fine, as long as they are two different signs. There you go, folks. I'm going to highlight that, circle it, put a star next to it. That's a formula you need to memorize. And that's a very, very popular one, too, a difference of two squares. Ready? Let's try number nine. Now, to identify it, first we like to check. Are there two terms? Yes. Is it subtraction? Yes. Are they both squared terms? Well, I square 2 to get 4. I square y to get y squared. So that first term is definitely a perfect square. And if I look over the 9, the 9 is also a perfect square, right? What do we square to get 9? Oh, we have 3. So are they both perfect squares? Yes. So we can jump right into difference of two squares. But no, remember what we have to do first? Whether you, ever, you always factor over here, always look for a GCF. Is there a factor that we can take out of both terms? Is there anything between 4y squared? and 9 that I can factor out. And actually, there's not. But it's really important that we check, guys. All right. Well, if not, let's jump right into it. Here we go. 
All right, 4y squared. If we think of the square root of 4y squared, that's 2 and 2. And the y squared just gives you a single y and a single y, right? If you multiply those two back out, do you see how you get 2y times 2y? 4y squared. Nice. The 9, when you take the square root, you get 3 and 3. And you just want to alternate your signs. All done. Again, if you FOIL that out, I guarantee you on my life that you would get that starting function. That's pretty cool. Let's do another one. Mm, how about number 10? Okay, so let's check. Is it subtraction? Oh, sorry, is it two terms? Yippee. Is it subtraction? Yippee. If it's plus, it's different and doesn't quite work here. So it's important that you check if it is a difference or a subtraction. Are both terms perfect squares? 25 is, and k squared is, and 81 is also a perfect square. So yes, they are both squares. Okay, let's look for GCF first. Is there a number that goes into both pieces? Hmm, 25 and 81. Me thinks no. Okay, let's just jump into it then, friends. The square root of 25, okay and okay, of k squared, okay, okay, and then how about 81? Okay, okay, and then plus minus. Look how easy that is. It's such a very, very important type of factoring that in a way, once you know it, it's actually really easy and kind of fun. I'm going to just search through. Is there one that has maybe a GCF to throw me off? Ooh, yeah, there's a couple here, aren't there? Hmm. Well, let's see. What could I find? Oh, how about 16? And I'm looking at 16 because look what my eyes are searching for. Are there two terms? Yes. Is there subtraction? Yes. Are they both perfect squares? No. Look at the C to the fifth. What the heck? 27 is not a perfect square. But I know I'm going to use the difference of two squares here. So what should I be looking for first? Mm -hmm. And maybe after we do that, maybe we'll be good to go to use the difference of squares formula. Okay, ready? This is why GCF is huge. All right, let's see. What can I take out of both 147 and 27? Ew, gosh, there's some really crazy numbers in there. Um, well, I know 27 is like 3 times 3 times 3. So I know there's some 3s in there. Why don't we take out a 3 and see what we can do? And then let's see. Between the two variables, the C5 and C3, I can take out C3. Okay, so let's just do a little GCF work here. All right, 147 divided by 3. All right. Mental math. People, 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 people is 49. C cubed. I'm taking that out of C to the 5, so I'm left with two of them. Minus. 27 divided by 3 was 9. And C cubed and C cubed is just C0 or 1. Okay. So the moral of the story is we're going to learn. After you do GCF, sometimes you have to go further. And look at that. Are there two terms? Yes, sir. Is it subtraction? Yes, sir. Look at each term. Look, 49, 9, they're perfect squares. C squared is a perfect square. Yay! So now we can use our difference of squares. So in the parentheses, he's going to change to our difference of squares formula. But what happens to that 3C cubed? Well, he's on the outside, so we're just going to keep him on the outside while we play with the inside. Okay? So don't just drop the 3C cubed. He's still there. He's still got feelings. So don't drop him. Okay, inside my parentheses, ready? 49c squared, square root, 49 gives me, c squared gives me. How about the 9? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And difference of squares gives me a plus and a minus. I guarantee if you FOIL this whole massive thing out, you would get the OG. But it's really important, friends, that you did the GCF first. Otherwise, if you look at this and think, oh, there's no squares here, yeah, you're right, and you might skip it. But do GCF always first to see if there's some bonus afterwards. Even looking at number 15 off to the side, 150 is not a perfect square. But I bet if you do a little bit of GCF action here, you'll find it. So after GCF, the difference of two squares is really, really popular. The next two we're going to do have to do with cubing. We learned a formula for cubing last time. If you remember, if you have a plus b and you want to cube a binomial, we had a formula for that. This is not the opposite of that, like the difference of squares was in the previous one. It is if you have two terms that are cubed numbers. And sum means they're being added. 
looking forward for a second, it's also going to work if it's subtraction as well. The formula is going to be very similar. But if you see two terms with either addition or subtraction in between, you can totally use this formula here called the sum of cubes formula, or the sum of two cubes. Ready? Here's your formula. This one's interesting. All right, let's put it here in red. A cubed plus B cubed. Okay, when you factor that, you're going to have two parentheses. One is small. The other one is much bigger. All right, here's what you do. You take the cube root of the A, and you just get A by itself. You get A here. Those are the fronts of the parentheses. You take the cube root of the B cubed, and you should just get B by itself. So he'll be at the end, and he'll be way over at the end. And then the middle term over here on the right side is just the A and the B multiplied together. Multiply that, and you just get AB. Now, the signs in between all these friends. You think of the word soap. If you can think of the word soap, then you are good to go. Soap, Mr. Brown, what are you talking about? Well, the first sign here is the same as your original. The original is a plus. So this is the same as that one. That's also a plus. If S is for same, what do you think O is for? Mm-hmm, it's the opposite. So if your beginning over here was a plus, this sign is a negative. AP means you're always positive. Okay? So look and look at that just for memorizing purposes, and flashcards are a really good idea for these folks to help you memorize these formulas. If you have a cubed and a cubed, and it's plus, you have two parentheses, A and A in the front, a B and B in the back, and A B in the middle of the second parentheses, and you just do soap, plus, minus, plus. Same as the original. Opposite sign of the original, and the last sign, no matter what, is always positive. So just think soap. Hopefully you always use soap every day, so therefore it's easy to remember. All right, there's your formula. So let's start with number 17, and we're going to do this checklist again. Just like we do a difference of squares. Are there two terms? Yes, sir. Is it a sum? Is it plus? Yes, sir. Is each term a cubed number? Yes. X cubed is a cubed number. 216? Oh, gosh, is it? I think it is, but we might have to play with some numbers to figure that one out. But I believe it is. So we can use our formula. But again, just like always, as you see over here in the instructions, in the uh, instructions, always, always look for GCF. Now in 17, though, I don't see a GCF between the two terms, so we're just going to jump right into that. So let's figure out, first of all, let's off to the side here, let's talk about 216. What is 216? I know 2 goes into it, right? So this is going to be 2 times, let's see, 216 divided by 2 is 108. 108 is 2 times 54. 54 is 2 times 27. Ooh, 27. That's a perfect cube. I know that one. Okay, cool, cool. And then 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So really, really off to the side, I'm thinking 216 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Or, ready? 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And 2 times 3 is 6. Mr. Brown, why the heck are you doing this? Let me show you. This is 6 cubed. So I basically wrote 216 as a cubed number. Why? You'll see in a second. But to be able to identify these cubed numbers is pretty, pretty useful. So it took a little while to break this one down, but maybe it's important to kind of memorize 216 as a cubed number if you cube 6. All right. So before I jump to my formula of a cubed plus b cubed a plus B, A. Oh, Mr. Brown, I gotta fix my formula. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me go up here on top. Mr. Brown, that was so lazy. On your formula, pure friends, can you look at the second parentheses? Oh, this was so lazy. The A needs a squared and the B needs a squared. Oh, Mr. Brown. Oh, I am ashamed of myself and I'm hitting myself in the head as we speak. A squared and B squared. You have to, right? Because if the A on the front and the A squared hate each other, that's how you get your A cubes. Oh, Mr. Brown. Do you forgive me? Good. Let's move on. So a plus b times a squared 
minus AB plus B squared. There we go. So first, I think it'd be really useful to know what is the A and what is the B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little list off here on the side. And that's useful for you to do too before you start the factoring so you know how to plug these in. If A cubed is X cubed, then what is just A? What's the cube root of A cubed? Or what's the cube root of X cubed? It should just be the X term by itself, right? What's B cubed? 216. So therefore, what's B by itself? Oh, remember how I rewrote 216 as this? So if that's B cubed, then what's the cube root of that? B is 6. That's really, really helpful because now all we can do is just plug all the A's for X's and all the B's for a 6. Okay, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to do it down here in this box. But if you can keep going in your box, that's great. So here is the factoring for here. We looked for GCF, right? We didn't find it. But now let's go ahead and do, this is going to be a plus b, a squared minus a b plus b squared. Okay, ready? We're going to plug in. A is x, b is 6. a squared. Now, I'm squaring the whole term, so I'm going to put in parentheses, although it's not going to make a big difference. Later, it will, so it would be good practice. Minus a b. All right, a is x, b is 6, right? plus b, oops, which is a 6, squared. The first term, there's not much to do with it, so leave it. The sex, uh, second term, ready? x squared is really x squared minus x times 6 is just 6x, and 6 squared is 36. That's actually our final answer. And you may be thinking, well, can I just factor this one at all? No, the second parentheses never factors. If you think about it, if he did factor, then we probably have more to the formula up here. It would tell us that we could factor more. But no, it stops there. This is the last part of the formula, so there's nothing more to factor. We're done. All right. Well, after, after Mr. Brown embarrassingly fixed the formula, number 17 wasn't too bad. How about we try 20? I'm going to try 20 over here. But I need a little bit of space because my stuff got all messy. Okay, ready? Number 20. You know, before I even talk about shall we look for A's and B's and cubes, I'm going to jump right to the GCF question first. Is there a GCF between these two terms? Oh my gosh, look at these numbers, Mr. B. Well, 125 I know is like a multiple of 5. I think that's 5 cubed we learned before, right? 729, I'm not exactly sure what 729 is, it might be, I think, 9 cubed. We can check that in a second. But either way, I can see that 5 cubed and 9 cubed don't have a GCF, and J cubed and K cubed also don't have a GCF. They're both cubed, but they don't have the same thing in common that we could factor out. Okay, so we'll jump right to our parentheses. Let's do the check really quick. Ready? Do I have two terms? Yes. Is it added? Yes. Are they both cubed numbers? Yes. Now that we rewrote it, 5 cubed and 9 cubed, J cubed and K cubed? Yes, they are. I'm going to make my little list off to the side here, folks. Ready? What is the A? What is the B? Again, if this whole front term is A cubed, what's your original A? Well, if A cubed was 5 cubed, the original A must be just the cube root of that. And if A cubed had the J cubed, then the A should just be 5J. Does that make sense? Therefore, can you see that B, if B cubed was this whole term, that b would be 9 by itself, k by itself. Okay, I'm going to use that now and plug right into my formula. Here we go. Ready? This guy factors. There's no GCF, so let's just jump right into it. It should be a. Now, I'm really worried about this a because this a is like not just a single variable like in the last one. It's got a 5, 2, and I have to square it. It's not this. It's not just that. So I'm being really careful. So first, let me re-establish my equal sign here. We have the a plus b, and then the whole rest of the formula here, right? So a plus b. That looks okay. 
it's over here. This one started getting me a little nervous. I got a little nervous too early. Sorry about that. But a squared is not that. No, 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 no. You're squaring the entire a here, which means you're squaring the 5, 2. So can you do this for me, friends? Can you be extra careful? And let's put the a in parentheses. So how about a squared? Ah, that makes sense now. Okay, that's a squared. Opposite sign, right? a, b, which is a, b. Notice all these parentheses. And then soap, always positive, right? So plus b squared. Ooh, b is complicated, right? Should we put in parentheses? Yes, sir. b squared. Look at that. Look how important those parentheses are because we're going to have to now square them out. And that will give us the right answer. First parentheses, ready? 5j plus 9k. That was pretty easy. Now, 5j squared is 5j times 5j. So 25j squared minus 5j and 9k. If you multiply the numbers, and then just j times k. And the last term, 9k squared should be 81k squared. So really important here, folks, moral of the story. When you are plugging in and your A's and B's are more complicated, they have numbers and letters, better we use those parentheses there to know which one you're going to square. All right, good. Well, the good news is that's the sum of cubes. The difference of cubes is almost exactly the same. You're just going to switch the signs. So here we go. Now, Mr. Brown's going to get this formula right. How about A cubed minus B cubed? Ready? Just like before, small parentheses, long parentheses. A and A squared. B and B squared. And then again, A, B here in the middle. Ready? Soap. Now, the original is a minus now, right? Because it's called a difference of cubes. So now, if the original is the negative, then the same would be a negative. The opposite of the negative would be a positive. And, of course, AP means always positive. There's your formula, folks. So you can notice that the terms are exactly the same as the previous one here. But it's the signs that change. But, again, if you always remember SOAP, you're good to go. Shall we try one? Let's see. Let's find a good one here. Mm, let's do... Gosh, they're all really good ones. I would love to find one that has a GCF first. How about 28? 28 looks like it has a GCF, and I notice that because I'm looking at that 4, and that 4 is freaking me out. There's no cubing of 4. Like, what do you cube and get 4? What do you cube and get just a W by itself? What? So I'm thinking we're probably going to have to do some GCF action. What do you think? Shall we do it? All right, GCF here. I feel like I can pull 4 out of 500. I think 4 goes in there pretty nicely, and they both have one W in common that I can factor out. All right, leftovers. 500 divided by 4 is 125. W4, I'm going to take out a W, is just W cubed. And when I take a 4W away from 4W, I'm just left with 1. Okay, so my A here. Now, this is an A cubed. You can see they're both cubed terms. And this is a B cubed. I just cubed 1. There's two terms. There is subtraction. And they're both cubed terms. So let me make my list here. The A itself, what did I cube to get this term? To get the 125, I cubed a 5. To get the W cubed, I cubed a W. B is pretty nice because it's just the number 1. So what did you cube to get 1? Well, just 1. Notice I didn't put negative 1. You don't have to worry about the negative 1 because the negative is taken care of here in the formula. Okay, ready to go. Now, the 4W pulled out as a GCF, so he's going to stay on the outside the whole time. Parentheses. Longer parentheses. Okay, here we go. This is A minus b and then we have a squared plus a times b plus b squared okay we're running a little short on time so final answer really quick friends and that's the start to factoring guys really good job there you go there's your final answer we'll continue more with this packet when i see you in the next video great job everybody